ever seen a backyard professor eat yogurt before? Blueberry yogurt. It's good crap. They say it's good for you. Improve your gut biome. Now if I could just get some chest yogurt to improve my chest. But I do have some great news for you, my fans. Let's continue with the Bobby Fisher series, shall we? Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Feuerstein versus El Ababino. Let's see what happens here. Oh, look at this. We are going to do a King's Indian. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Calm down. Let's see what gives here. Yep, going to do a King's Indian. So let's get the King's Indian going here. Bishop G7, Bishop G2. And then Bobby will castle, definitely. This is when he was still relatively young. He's at least 79 here. Yes, I'm kidding. What a smart aleck. I feel bad about that, really. I'll get over it, though. Bobby goes D6, and now here comes the knight. So Feuerstein's going to get ready to castle, definitely. And Bobby says, okay, let's keep on. Bringing the stuff out, which is a, always a good strategy. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, basic chess 99. Bring your pieces out like crazy. Going to do a little defensive stab there. He's going to solidify his center and bring his B up just in case. And now Bobby puts his rook on B8. So Feuerstein, Fianchetto's both of his bishops... This could be interesting, and here comes Bobby. He's, it's real interesting because the, the center isn't locked with pawns, is it? it I mean, it's, it's relatively wide open, right? And they're not, either one of them, fully developed. And here comes Bobby, zinging up the side, attacking. <laughs> that is so Fisher. C takes B5, and A takes B5, and now we've got an open file, semi-open file, if he chooses to do a file move, but he does not. He keeps pressing the pawn. So Bobby comes all the way up the side just as quick as he knows how to move. Knight will come over to A4, which is no problem. And now here the uh, commentator said this was... This is not the best because it does weaken his pawns. And, and we'll see what that means. And, uh... Oh man, did I miss something? I did. Sorry. Boy. Hang on. No, hang on. A takes B5. After A takes B5, he pushed D5. And then Bobby went Knight A5. There we go. And then he pushed his Rook to C1. Boy, talk about a blather skate sort of dude. He went to Rook C1. And then Bobby pushed the Pawn. Sorry, this was still here. Then Bobby pushed the pawn, and then he put. I, I skipped a step. Sorry, it is so typical of amateur backyard professor stuff, isn't it? And then he pushes the e6, and the, they said, well, that wasn't exactly what he should have done, because it does weaken his pawns, and the d takes the e, and the f takes the e. And now queen comes to c2. And Bobby's going to keep pushing pawns. Um, so we'll see what happens. And here comes the rook. Rook's f to d1. So Feuerstein is trying to get something going powerful with his rooks. I mean, obviously, right? He's going he's gonna to hit this pawn because this pawn is pinned. Remember the last video I showed you? 
always put your rook in, in front of the king, the opponent's king. It's also always good to put your rook in front of the opponent's queen. Don't worry about how much material is in between them. Anytime you can put a rook in on the other opposite side of a king or a queen, it's always good news. Eventually, you can get a pin and get working on that. So this is going to get interesting. Bobby comes to c5, rook fd1, knight to b7 to protect that pawn. And now here comes a knight to e5. So see, again, the pawn is pinned. So that's a good move, and he got an exclamation point for that. He can centrally develop uh, with impunity at this point. And then Bobby comes back up to a5, and he got a question mark. We're not quite sure... What the heck, Bob? Come on! Fisher! Don't let us down, man! And now knight will come to e8. So, truly, the knight on this side wasn't doing a lot. So he's going to try to... See, you want to keep all of your pieces active, and that was one of the things that made Fisher so dadgum great. Is he true? If a piece wasn't pulling his weight, Bobby would man maneuver it until it was. That's a kind of a cool little mini lesson. So here comes Fisher, and of course he's going to take advantage of the pin. You always attack the, the pinned piece or else attack the piece that the pinned piece can't respond. So this is good chess, and he's blowing into the center here, and it's starting to look pretty dangerous. Fisher dodges over to here, and then he comes back to C2. Now what is interesting here, he had... At this point, he had some pretty good pressure going on, yeah? What would have been wrong with adding more pressure like that? Now, that would have started getting just a little bit complex for Bobby, yeah. But instead, for whatever reason, Feuerstein came back to C2, and the commentator said, no, no, that, that, that. That's not good. Well, Bobby is going to exchange the long-range bishops. Now, you had them both being kettled. And so he had those long, powerful diagonals, and that was making Bobby uncomfortable, simply because his position didn't accommodate a way to close out the center good enough to block the dynamics of those Fianchetto bishops because White was playing a good dynamic power game, right? So one way, start exchanging the pieces to get rid of the dynamic power of your opponent. That's, that's what we're seeing Bobby here do. And you say, yeah, but doesn't he want his bishops too? Yeah, but White was better. So now, look at this. He's still trying to break in, yeah? Bobby says, okay, I'll tell you what. I'll swap you the knights. Now, notice Bobby gets the central knight, yeah? True, he does just exchange the knights. Notice Bobby got the central knight. However, you know, there's always a compensation in the process of getting the central knight. He does double the central pawns, if they become blockaded, they can become a major weakness. But he also gives white the open file <laughs> with the rook, yeah? So you gotta, you know, keep, keep cognizant that you have potential weaknesses, but he's trading down now. You can see Fisher is really trading down and doing it quick. Queen comes to check, and then Feuerstein stops the check with f3. And the comment was, rather than f3, king g1 truly was better. For what it's worth, yeah? So he does bump up the f3, and here comes Fisher. Now... Again, there's a nice little micro lesson here that is really important to discuss in the long-term chess game when you have doubled up pawns, especially in the center. 
If you can advance them, then they don't become a weakness because you are remaining mobile. But if you get those blockaded by something, I mean, that just cramps it. That'll keep your bishop hemmed in forever. And that is what you want to do if you see your opponent with the double pawns blockaded, if at all possible, right? So that automatically makes sense. If you are the owner of double pawns, try like crazy to advance them. And that is what Fisher does. So great play by a young Bobby Fisher. He's aware of some of these principles, and we can see he's doing them. So now look, the dynamic of the white pieces is all of a sudden gone. Isn't that remarkable? Just a few moves ago, he really had some dynamic pieces. Now he doesn't. That's very interesting to see that. Rook will go to f1, and now Bobby continues the exchange. He gets rid of all the bishops. Now, it's interesting because it's an open board, an on an open board with, with not much clog in the center. The bishops are the hot rods on the chessboard, right? Bobby eliminates all of that. He says, no, I, I don't want any bishops at all. Not interested in the bishop game. So now you say, well, now Fisher's going to use his partial file. So Feuerstein has had an option of files, and technically, now of course the rook is a long-range piece, we know that, so there is still great power in that file, but he hasn't been using it for operations. Well, your rook's just going to sit there, and it's true, his knight is on the back file also, the back row also, and so it's really not being effective, so this isn't the best position, but rather than bring back out the knight, Bobby felt that the rook would give him more power. Notice what he's doing, he's tickling the queen. He's trying to get the initiative, so he's changed down the dynamic pieces of Feuerstein. And now he's trying to build an initiative. That is, he's going to make Feuerstein respond to him. And in this instance, Feuerstein had no choice. He's got to respond to him. So this is really getting interesting. And Feuerstein does that. What do you see here? The queen is way way far away. <laughs> yeah. So, really, that got a question mark. That, that No, that really wasn't quite the right spot to put her. So, she it, it's almost like she's out of play now. So, this is going to be interesting. And then, again, trying to get the initiative. And now it's real interesting because... Uh, Bobby can come and start playing around over here. And he has an advanced pawn over here. Yeah? So this is what I mean. Now Bobby has gained the initiative with a nice file. Partial open file, but he's going to attack that pawn. So, so now what? Truly, at this juncture... Uh, you, you put your queen out of play anyway. Yeah. And you dang sure can't stop at b5. <laughs> right? So, it's going to be the exchange of queens. You notice how Bobby manipulated that, gaining the initiative, so that now Feuerstein is forced to do something with this queen over and over again. And that's exactly what Bobby wanted. So now... Let's get rid of the ladies. And now you start looking at this and you say, yeah, it's starting to look drawish. Rook takes a2. There is a good defense that Feuerstein can bring in. Yeah. So you, you saw that. And Bobby's going to go ahead and say, okay, let's go check. 
and e takes f3 here so really truly it was here that they agreed to a draw the commentator had a very interesting point though he said now uh, Fisher later in life would continue playing even on a drawsboard. He was still really quite young here. But, and, and so he gave an example. He said, for instance, for instance, rook to e5, and then king comes to f2. You're, you're basically approaching the end game if you're not in it right now. It is really rather mawkishly drawish. But, again, in an end game theme, get your king to the center, or at least toward the center. Uh, so that's a good move there. And then you've got to activate that knight. Without question, you have to activate that knight. And then the rook to c2. Now you can see the defense of Feuerstein got really strong all of a sudden. Now you realize, oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is probably going to end up being a draw, although you can really centralize your knight well. Uh, and maybe, maybe not make something happen. So, so this particular Fisher game was a draw, but we saw a lot of little things that added up for Fisher, even though he made some weakening moves with his pawns that weakened his pawns, more or less. We also saw Feuerstein misplace his queen, which somewhat compensated Fisher with his pawns. So uh, a fun little game. It did end in a draw, but there's things there that they both did that we can continually learn from. For myself, what I noticed, simply because I've had it happen to me so much that it just driving me nuts, and then when it dawned on me years ago, oh yeah, that's what you have to do, then I began to try to at least do it, is when, when Fisher doubled his pawns. And, and he did have his knight back here when his pawns were doubled. I mean, yes, the piece is stronger than the pawns, but being centrally doubled pawns, if you can advance them, that's always a good option. Because, man, once they get blockaded, it just kills you. So we saw Fisher do that. So that's good for us to just, it's a good refresher, I'll put it that way. So. Anyway, there is your Backyard Professor chess video. Remember, you guys are awesome. Have fun, be good, do well, be good neighbors. Have a happy day, and I will see you in the next Backyard Professor, a chess of videos.